Happy Sabbath, children of God. Happy Sabbath, children of God. Happy day. God is good. And all the time, adventurers, 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 little lights, Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I will meet with the leaders uh, and we will talk a few things concerning that. Let me thank God for this opportunity and the privilege that he has given me to come to this church and also to minister during the World Adventurer Day or Sabbath. I want to thank the leadership of the church, the pastorate, together with other leaders for welcoming me so that we can share together. Just like Pastor Emmanuel said, I coordinate those very many departments in South Nairobi, Kajiado field. And I want to thank this church for the support they have always given the youth ministries of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, South Nairobi, Kajiado. In particular, I want to thank the Pathfinder Ministry for the just concluded East Kenya Union Conference, Masai Mara Kampori. This church produced the highest number of campus, 163 together uh, with their staff, and that was an amazing number. Therefore, I take this special opportunity to thank the leadership of the Pathfinder Ministry, and uh, in that case, the Junior Youth Ministry, for doing such a great work. Thank you, the church, for supporting your Pathfinders, because without your support, they would not have done what they were able to do. Allow me to remind you of what you have already been told, eh? especially in relation to our fundraiser, which is on 5th of June, 2022. I listened to the announcement by the elder, and I want to say that the announcement was very clear and elaborate. You are our great partners in South Nairobi Kajiado field. You have done it in the past. And this time around, we are looking forward to your immense and great support. We are looking forward to finishing the payment of that piece of land come on 5th, June 2022. 20, then after that, we will move to the next level. I'm calling upon each one of us through our respective departments because when I listened to the announcement, I loved the way the leadership of this church has organized for that program that every department has been given a goal and therefore I want to appeal passionately to all of us that we dig deeper into our pockets so that we can support our field to grow so that we can finish the work of the gospel in our territory. I want to thank the adventurers in a very special way for the presentations they have been able to perform here. And I want to thank my co-preacher uh, for such a wonderful sermon that he has given us on how we are supposed to reflect the character of Jesus Christ in our lives which basically is our theme this blessed Sabbath day. Before I forget, also, I want to remind the choir, I am also in charge of music, that we have been having a series of music fairs 
in South Nairobi Kajiado field. We concluded with Southern Nairobi Station on 15th of this month. And therefore, on 31st July this year, we will be having a big event in this church. The field music fair will be conducted in this church. And uh, this church will host 32 choirs from the entire South Nairobi Kajiado field. The good news, or the bad news of the good news, is that New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church Choir will not be participating. They will only be hosting. We want to invite that choir in a very special way to be the ones to leave the curtains for that big event. When I was asking why uh, they did not participate, they said they didn't get information in time. I respect that. Uh, fortunately, we will be having, I think, two gentlemen from this church who will be doing the adjudication. So as much as you are not participating in singing, your members are participating in adjudication. And so I want to ask uh, the elder in church of music, the music coordinator, the choir director, and also the entire choir to plan for us that big day. And I know you have the capacity to do that. May God bless you. Now allow me to do just a small bit of why I came here. Today we are celebrating 33 years ever since Adventure Club was started in the year 1989. We have witnessed tremendous uh, progress ever since that club was started. And there is nothing as difficult as dealing with adventurers. You all witnessed, even when they were here, that it is difficult to coordinate that, that, that club, those children. Why? Simply because they are young. Their level of concentration is a bit low. It's a bit low. They cannot concentrate for a long time. I want to applaud all the teachers who are taking their precious time to teach these young children. It takes, it, it takes courage. It takes a big heart. So please, parents and the entire church, may you support this club. At least for Pathfinder, that one is a bit established. But for adventurers, they require a lot of support. They need a lot of mental stamina. And therefore, I want to appeal as a church, parents, and every stakeholder in the youth ministry to really support these uh, young people so that they can be able to realize their dream. I was so happy when I saw the ambassadors do a presentation here. You also need to support uh, the, ad the uh, ambassadors because it's not easy for ambassadors to stand here and do a presentation. I am so happy and those friends of mine, the ambassadors, I applaud you. And may God bless you so, so much so that you can continue to let your light so shine, not just in this church, but even outside this church, so that many will be able to see the good work of our Lord Jesus Christ and be able to glorify his name. Our message or our theme during this global adventure Sabbath is Little Light. And there is a song that adventurers love to sing. It says, this little light of mine, I will do what? I will let it shine. Can I hear the adventurers sing that song? Adventurers, today is your day. And the church, allow me to use a hybrid way of doing a presentation so that we can also take care of our adventurers. Can you kindly sing that song, this little light of mine? Mm-hmm.
Thank you, thank you so much. I want to pray for you so that that light, however small it is, it will continue to shine until Jesus comes the second time. Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven, this is a commitment by these young people, the adventurers, that the little light that you have given them, it will continue to shine in their lives, no matter the circumstances of life, until Jesus comes the second time. May you make it possible for these adventurers to live in accordance to what they have sung, stand with them, and as a church, help us to support them and support this ministry. And as we delve into your word, may your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, our passage of consideration is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. But you will agree with me that it begins all the way from verse 14, where the Bible says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and they put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Friends, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 is part of the long discourse of a series of teachings that Jesus had for the multitudes who were following him as a record in the book of Matthew chapter 5 which is commonly known as the Beatitudes. This discourse forms part of the essential or the essentials of a Christian and we need these beatitudes now more than the congregation or the multitude that was following Jesus then. Jesus took his time to take through those that were following him of what it means to follow Christ Jesus. Remember, a Christian is a person who walks and lives like Jesus Christ. When we are called disciples of Jesus Christ, a disciple is one who walks with and the one who learns from and the one who lives in submission to a master in order to become like the master. All of us are called upon to be Christians and to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And without those three elements of discipleship, then we fall short of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. One who walks with, one who learns from, and the one who lives in submission to a master in order to become like the master is the best description and a definition of who a disciple is. And therefore, Jesus took time to tell the multitude that was following him of what it means to follow Christ Jesus. And as we unpack this passage of Matthew 5, verse 16, it is imperative for us to know that Jesus made two descriptions concerning the following that was following him, the multitude that was following him, before he said that you are the light of the world, which will be the subject of discussion, he first said, you are the salt of the earth. Now, adventurers, how many of you know what salt is? Can I see your hands? Those who know what salt is. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. How many do not have an idea what salt is? They have never seen salt. They have never tasted salt. Yes, I can see several hands. By the way, adventurers may not know what salt is. 
until you describe what salt is. That which is put on vegetables, uh -huh, so that the vegetables and the githeri can have some flavor is what we call a salt. Now, let me see, adventurers. How many of you put salt on ugali? Uh -huh, ugali, you add salt. Yes, I can see a few hands. <laughs> now, friends, salt has two purposes. You know, I am, base, I am building the foundation for what Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But before he said that, he said, you Christians, you followers are the salt of the earth. Now, according to the ancient teaching, salt has two purposes. Number one, it is used on food so that food can have flavor. And number two, it is used as a preservative. There are many, you know, uses of salt, but allow me to only pick those two, that salt adds flavor to food, and then number two, salt preserves. Christians are the salt of the earth. In a world where we have lost the beauty of life. In the world where people have lost taste, Christians come in handy so that they can soothen and sweeten life. You are called to sweeten and soothen life, add flavor to life, so that those who live in this world will have a taste of who God is in their lives. The Bible says, if salt loses its flavor, it is good for nothing, and it can only be trodden down. Do we have Christians who have lost flavor in the world? Do we have Christians who are seated here, but they have lost the flavor they have lost that sweetness. The Bible says if we lose our position in the world as people who add flavor to the world, then we are good for nothing Christians who need to be trodden down. Do not lose your sweetness or your savour. Do not lose you have flavor as a Christian. Where you are living, where you are working, where our children go to school, we need to sweeten and soothen life so that those who do not know Jesus Christ will have a taste of who God is in their lives. Salt is also used as a preservative. God has put us in the world to preserve life. I am proud of those men and women of the Old Testament whose prayer would preserve an entire nation. God is looking for men. God is looking for women. God is looking for children, adventurers whose position and whose stand and whose prayer can preserve an entire church. If God wanted to visit our country, Kenya, with vengeance, we need men who can stand and offer a prayer like the prayer of Elijah, and God will change his heart from destroying a nation. We have had such people in the world, and God is looking for men and women in our last days who can preserve posterity, who can preserve a generation. On that backdrop, on that backdrop, then Jesus said, now, once you have known your role in the society and in the world, he again told Christians, you are the light of the world. 
there are two things that Matthew says. He says for a normal human being, you cannot light a lamp and put it under a basket, but you put it on a lampstand so that it can give light to all who are in the house. That is the essence of light. You cannot light a lamp and then you cover it. Why? Because the purpose of light is for people to be able to identify and see that light. And he also said that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Friends, we are not Christians by accident. God has a reason as to why he wants us to be light of the earth. And I want to tackle two things. Number one, what is represented by this light? The Bible says you are the light. Before we finally look at, let your light so shine in the world so that many will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us see what is represented by this light that we are talking about. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 5 that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What is represented by the light that Jesus is talking about? The Bible, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So adventurous. Even as we are saying that we as little lights, we will keep on shining. It means that we must accept the word of God to live in our lives. Why? Because the word of God is lamp unto our feet and also light to our path. I was so proud of my co-preacher Joshua when he clearly expounded 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Without the word of God in his life, he could not be able to do what he was able to do. What are we saying, parents and church members? That we must purposely endeavor to teach the word of God to our children, in our families, and in our churches, and in our schools. There are three agencies of Christian education or Adventist education. The home, the church, and the school. And for us to be able to have well-nourished young people like the ones who came here and confessed that they have gone through Adventure and Pathfinder and we are so proud of them, then we must introduce the word of God into the lives of our children as early as these young ones. In the afternoon, you will see what these young people have been able to do in as far as the word of God is concerned. The word of God is a lamb. The word of God is light unto our feet. It is the word of God that will brighten our lives and make straight our path. Let us cherish the word of God. Even as we celebrate 33 years ever since Adventure Club started, let us underscore the fact that the word of God must be the foundation of everything we do in life. An extension of, the, of Psalm 119 is Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, 16, and 17. Take note of this. It says, And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God preferred and it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and for training in righteousness so that the servant of God, the man of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good word. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And now Paul tells Timothy that since childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Why? Friends, the Holy Scriptures are able to make us wise unto salvation. Do we want to be wise and salvation? Yes, if that is the case, let us, let us cherish 
the word of God. It is able to make us wise unto salvation. As if that is not enough, the word of God gives us four very important things. Number one, it teaches us. It instructs us. Number two, the word of God rebukes or reproves us. When we go wrong, the word of God rebukes us so that we are able to come back to where we are supposed to be. Number three, the word of God corrects us. And then number four, the word of God trains us into righteousness so that in conclusion, the man of God, the woman of God, the child of God will be thoroughly equipped unto every good word. It is in that respect that Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. I will leave it at that point. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Friends, when we are talking about let your light so shine, then it's a call, a wake-up call to all of us to get back to the scriptures. I want to confess to you that Christians living in these last days, including our children, have not been exposed to the word of God as it is supposed to be. Let us encourage our church members, encourage our children to have a foundation which comes by embracing the word of God. Moses said, these words I am teaching you today, you should diligently teach them to your children when they wake up and when they sleep, when they walk and when they sit. They must put tie this word of God round their neck so that they will not forget. We are living in a, in a generation where people have forgotten the word of God. And the moment you forget the word of God, you live in total darkness. You can do things, and when they are brought to your attention, you don't even see the need and the agents. Unashtuka. Simply because the word of God has disappeared to, uh, from our lives. We have Christians who are numb to the word of God. It cannot have any effect in their lives. I am calling upon you today, courtesy of the World Adventure Day, that we get back to the scripture because it is able to teach us, to rebuke us, to correct us, and to train us in righteousness so that a man, a woman, and a child of God will be thoroughly equipped unto every good work. So the light that we are talking about comes from the word of God. As if that's not in our friends, Jesus himself is the light. You know, when I was reading John chapter 8, verse 12, the Bible said, again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the light we are talking about does not belong to us. We as Christians do not have light of our own. We receive this light from Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And whoever follows me, whoever follows Jesus Christ, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That is not enough. In John chapter 9, verse 5, the Bible says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So the light that children are talking about the little light that we are talking about is the light that not only comes from the word of God, but also by embracing and putting on Jesus Christ. Praise God. Ask yourself, is Jesus the light of your life? Ask yourself, as a Christian, do you reflect the light of God in your life so that you can share this light with others? Ask yourself, are you living in darkness? And you will be surprised that John 3.19 has this very disturbing message. It says, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. That is the most unfortunate part of this discourse. The light has come into the world. This is the judgment. Jesus Christ has come as the light of the world. He has given us his word. 
yet people loved darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Remember Matthew 3, 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine so that people will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We have this category of people who have chosen darkness rather than light because their works were evil or are evil. So when you love darkness, definitely your works will be evil. Now, friends, lend me your ears. Because I want to finish with this description of what it means to let our light so shine. Listen very carefully. It has been said that when people are filled with the Holy Spirit and they are having a thriving relationship with God and they seek each day to follow the example of Jesus Christ, there is a significant glow about them. There is a difference in their steps, a difference in their personalities, a difference in service to others, and a difference in handling of their problems. People who are spirit-filled, people who have a thriving relationship with Jesus Christ and God, and the people who seek each day of their life to follow the example of Jesus Christ, there is a significant glow. You know, when you glow, it is the face that shows that you have glowed. So any time of your life, you see Christians who have a clumsy face, Christians who are cold, Christians who are not excited about their Christianity, then something will tell you that their life is not spirit-filled. They do not have a thriving relationship with God. And they do, not, they do not seek to follow Jesus' example every day of their life. My dear brother, my dear sister, when you will make a priority of when you will make Jesus a priority in your life, you seek him every day of your life, you endeavor to have a thriving relationship with him, you will naturally glow. Your face will brighten up. We will never have called Christians who cannot be excited because of the great things and because of the work of salvation that Jesus has given them. We will always be happy, excited because of what Christ has been able to do for us. And this glowing experience, this different, teaches us on what we are supposed to do about the grace and the salvation of Jesus Christ in our lives. And therefore, friends, when the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, it means that the light that we are talking about is your understanding that God is your Father and that Jesus is your Savior and that your path is being led forward by the loving involvement of the Holy Spirit in your life. You acknowledge of the work that God has accomplished in you through Christ Jesus. You recognize God as the provider and the sustainer of life and you acknowledge the saving works of Jesus Christ in your life. And then as if that is not enough, your path, your everyday life is being led by the loving spirit of God in your life. That is not enough. It is the awareness that what you were before knowing Jesus personally and accepting his sacrifice is nothing like what you are now. You treat yourself and others better as you understand more and more that God loves you and that, you will, and that he will provide for all your needs. 
Finally, friends, this understanding becomes evident to us as the light inside you. As the light of thankfulness that Jesus saved you and that you have hope in God to face whatever day may bring. Therefore, issues that seemed like mountains to scale become more like conquerable foothills when you know God is your guide. So when you let your light shine, it is this blunt awareness of who God is to you that becomes evident in your words, in your actions, and in your thoughts. In short, friends, when the Bible says, let your light so shine before men, it simply means that the character of Christ Jesus must be reflected in your life and that character must also be experienced by those around you. It means that you are aware of who God is in your life and therefore you make a pledge and a promise that in your words and in your actions and in your thoughts you will live a life that is like the life of Jesus Christ. In your words, in your actions, and in your thoughts. Ellen G. White, in her book, Christ's Object Lesson, chapter 3, verse 69, summarizes by saying this, that, is, that Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. I want to read again. Christ is waiting with longing desire the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Friends, the summary of all these things is that Christ is waiting with a longing desire a time when he will be manifested in your life and in my life. And that when Christ's character shall be perfectly reproduced in our lives, that is the time that Jesus Christ will come and claim you as his own. Ask yourself this question. Is my character like the character of Jesus Christ? That is what is summarized by let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So as adventurers are singing and saying, we are adventurers. We are learning every day. We want to be like Jesus. Friends, it means that they want their character to be like the character of Christ Jesus himself. And I think it is our prayer also, as old people, that God will help us so that our character will be like the character of Jesus Christ. So that our words, our actions, our thoughts, our way of dress, our way of walking, our way of singing, our way of sleeping, even our way of dreaming will be in accordance to the will of God. And when we will do that, we will be able to draw many into the kingdom of God, for that is the reason of our existence as Christians. And may God bless you. Our closing song is to... Let's all rise up. Let's praise God. 218. When he cometh to make up his jewels. 
When he cometh, when he cometh to make a peace to us, all the jewels, precious jewels, is loved and his own. Let the stars of the morning his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. He will gather, he will gather the gems for his kingdom, all the beauty. Ones, he's loved and he's own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crowns adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Little children. Children who love their Redeemer are the jewels, precious jewels, His love and His own. Like the stars of the morning, His bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their Our loving Father in heaven, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us this beautiful, blessed Sabbath day. We want, you, we want to thank you for teaching us and reminding us that we are the light of the world. And it's our prayer that, Lord, you will help us to let our light so shine before men so that they will be able to see our good works and glorify you who is in heaven. Help us, Lord, that we'll be able to reflect your character in our lives, in our words, in our thoughts, in our imaginations, in all our endeavors. Help us to indeed represent you. And therefore, because of that, many will be able to see you in our lives and turn from their evil ways and glorify you and also come into the fold. May you help us to live according to the expectation of this verse. And I want to pray for all of us that in one way or the other, if Lord, we have disappointed you by choosing darkness instead of light and by living in the works of darkness, we bow before you, pleading for forgiveness and acceptance and from today, help us to let our light so shine. Thank you for hearing our prayer. May you bless our young people, the adventurers, the pathfinders, as they grow in their Christian experience, that, Lord, you will walk with them. And I want to pray for the entire youth ministry, which is the major target of the enemy, that, Lord, you will shield your young people from the darts of the enemy, so that they will learn to walk with you and choose you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for hearing our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.